I reported recently on a Gigafactory that has just started construction in China to build solid state batteries. 100 gigawatt hours of solid state batteries. That's insane. And here is some interesting news on solid state battery development at MIT that you may not have heard of. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to have you here. As we all know, or as Stephen Hanley for Clean Technica says, as we think we know, a solid state battery is better than a battery with a liquid or semi-liquid electrolytes. A solid state battery has a lower risk of thermal runaway, what ordinary people call fires. It also has a higher energy density, can charge and discharge more rapidly, performs better in cold temperatures, and potentially can last longer, although currently they don't. So why isn't everyone using them to power the battery electric vehicles? The answer is nobody knows how to manufacture them outside of a laboratory. Yet the Chinese would disagree with that, considering they're building a battery gig, multiple battery gigafactories to build them. But anyway, I digress. Scientists are getting closer all the time to mass production of true solid state batteries. According to MIT, one of the main stumbling blocks to making a solid state battery is that instabilities in the boundary between the solid electrode layer and the two electrodes on either side can dramatically shorten the battery life. And that's what's happening right now in the laboratory. So adding special coatings to improve the bonding between the layers solves some of the problems, but it adds to the expense of manufacturing. A team of researchers at MIT and Brookhaven National Laboratory have come up with a way of achieving results that equal or surpass the durability of coated surfaces without the need for coatings. The key is to eliminate any trace of carbon dioxide during a critical step in the manufacturing process known as sintering. In that process, the solid state battery materials made of ceramic compounds are heated to create a bond between the cathode and the electrolyte. Doing so in the presence of pure oxygen creates bonds that match the performance of the best coated surfaces without the extra cost of the coating. The results of the research were published recently in the Journal of Advanced Energy Materials. Solid state batteries have been desirable for different reasons for a long time, says researcher Bilge Yildiz. The key motivating points for solid state batteries are they are safer and have higher energy density. But she says they have been held back from large scale commercialization by two factors, the lower conductivity of the solid electrolyte and the interface instability issues. The conductivity dilemma has been effectively tackled and reasonably high conductivity materials have already been demonstrated according to Yildiz. But overcoming the instabilities that arise at the interface has been far more challenging. These instabilities can occur during both the manufacturing and the electrochemical operation of such batteries. But for now, researchers have focused on the manufacturing and specifically the sintering process. So why is sintering needed? Well, sintering is needed because if the ceramic layers are simply pressed onto each other, the contact is far from ideal. Kind of like putting two pieces of bread with cheese in them together with melted cheese. There are too many gaps and the electrical resistance across the interface is high. Sintering causes atoms from each material to migrate into the other to form bonds. The team's experiments show that at temperatures anywhere above a few hundred degrees, detrimental reactions take place that increase the resistance at the interface if carbon dioxide is present even in minuscule tiny little amounts. They demonstrated that avoiding carbon dioxide and in particular maintaining a pure oxygen atmosphere during sintering could create very good bonding at temperatures up to 700 degrees with none of the detrimental compounds formed. The performance of the cathode electrolyte interface made using this method was comparable to the best interface resistances we have seen in the literature, but those were all achieved using the extra step of applying coatings. We are finding that you can avoid the additional fabrication step, which is typically expensive, Yildiz said. So what's next for solid state batteries? The research team at MIT is studying how these bonds hold up over the long run during battery cycling. Meanwhile, the new findings could potentially be applied rapidly to solid state battery production. What we are proposing is a relatively simple process in the fabrication of the cells. It doesn't add much energy penalty to the fabrication, so we believe that it can be adopted relatively easily into the fabrication process. 
the added costs are negligible, the team at MIT believes. This research was supported by the US Army Research Office through the MIT Institute for Soldier Nanotechnologies. In other words, your tax dollars are being used in America to fund research on battery development, which I think is probably a good thing. Clearly, the US is way behind China in terms of their battery production right now. However, the US does have some of the world's foremost solid state battery companies, which have received investments in the billions of dollars from legacy auto companies, big companies, Mercedes, BMW, Toyota, Volkswagen, etc., etc. QuantumScape is one of those. And I've made various videos about what's going on in the US. In fact, there's four big solid state battery companies right now in the United States making excellent progress on batteries. However, are we going to see them in cars anytime soon? No. Are we going to see them in cars anytime soon in China? Well, yes and no. Right now in China, there are cars currently being made with semi-solid state batteries. However, the energy density is nowhere near as high as true solid state batteries. And I don't believe that semi-solid state batteries are the battery technology of the future. I believe we're going to see full solid state batteries become the technology we use probably from around 2026 to 2027 in high-end and luxury vehicles. But I believe that the battery chemistry we'll use in 80% of electric cars sold worldwide for this entire decade will actually be a very simple battery that we already use right now. And those are LFP batteries or lithium ion phosphate. By the way, they're also very safe even when involved in a crash. The only big downside they have is their energy density. But energy density is continuing to improve in LFP batteries. And probably by 2023 or 2024, we'll see an energy density of more than 200 watt per kilo in LFP batteries. This will make them a very, very viable alternative to current NCA and NCM chemistry batteries meaning lithium ternary batteries, which are used by Legacy Auto and by pretty much every auto company outside of China. Now, right now, by far the most popular battery in China, which is taking more and more market share every single month, is LFP batteries. So current trends tend to appear to be moving towards LFP. But solid state batteries certainly could present interesting option by the time we get to say 2026, 2027, 28, 29, 30 at which point we might see batteries with range of more than 2,000 kilometers, or we might see cars, electric cars being commonplace with a range of more than 2,000 kilometers. It's really an exciting time to be alive. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll keep you updated on all the news that's going on with solid state batteries. And with what's going on in China and the US, it's gonna be a very, very tight competition between those two countries, because really those are the two countries right now that are at the forefront of solid state battery technology. Thanks for watching the channel, and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.